Good morning, my friends. Welcome to week number two here in Be Formed. Uh, today we're going to focus on the preface and the sanctus. Uh, last week, just a kind of quick review, uh, after the washing of the hands, the priest says, pray my brothers and sisters, everybody stands, and then the priest prays the prayer over the offerings, and everybody responds, amen. And then we go into what's called the preface. We begin the Eucharistic prayer, and the preface is part of that. And there's many different prefaces that the priest can choose. Uh, some are prescribed, you know, for certain saints, um, for certain feast days, certain seasons, Christmas, Easter. There's common prayers for weekdays. There's uh, common prefaces for Sundays that you can choose. So you'll hear different prayers, but they always start like this. And this can be either said or sung. The Lord be with you. and You know the response. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. And so this dialogue, just so we can connect it to history, uh, St. Hippolytus in 215 AD, so early 3rd century, uh, he reported this preface. So 1,800 years later, we're using the same words, slightly different. You know, we used to say, uh, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Now we say it is right and just. It's more faithful to the original Latin. So just to show that there's so many strong connections to the early church, and hopefully you see also the strong scriptural basis for everything that we do in the Mass. So let's break it down, this uh, in introductory dialogue. The Lord be with you. Um, so this is the third time this is used at Mass. Do you remember when the other two are? Of course, at the beginning of Mass, the, Lord, the priest will say, the Lord be with you. Or he might say, you know, may the... You know, uh, the, the Trinitarian formula, uh, and they'll say, may the Lord be with you. And then also before the gospel, um, you know, the Lord be with you, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, for example. So this is the third time we say the Lord be with you. And in scripture, whenever this phrase is used, um, Old Testament and New Testament, uh, it's used for those who God is calling on into a special mission. For example, Luke 1, 28, when the angel Gabriel is speaking to Mary, hail full of grace. Some translations say the Lord is with you. Others say the Lord be with you. Like, uh, may the Lord be with you on this special journey. And it's repeated over and over again throughout scripture. So why is that appropriate here? As we embark on this journey of the mass, we are time traveling. Remember, we're going back to the Last Supper. We're going back to the foot of the cross and uh, today we're going to hear how we're actually taking part in what's happening in heaven. So Mass is not boring once we understand what's going on. And we're on this journey together. So the priest is acting in the person of Christ, in persona Christi. And uh, um, together, the priest and the congregation is entering into the mystery of the holy sacrifice of the Mass. And so the people respond, and with your spirit, it's that sense that we're both on this journey together, priest and the people. Then the priest says, lift up your hearts, and, we, and the people respond, we lift them up to the Lord. Again, scriptural basis in Lamentations 341, let us lift up our hearts and hands to God in heaven. So when you hear that lift up your hearts, like do we physically lift up our hearts? No, but in, in scripture, the heart is the hidden center of the person from which comes his thoughts, emotions, and actions. So this is the call from the priest to the people to give your fullest attention to what's about to happen in the Eucharistic prayer. So it's common where you might be daydreaming, uh, you might be thinking about what do I have to do after Mass, but this is a wake-up call to set aside all of our worldly concerns and focus our minds, wills, emotions, our hearts, the center of who we are, to what's about to happen because this is can be life-changing. St. Paul says in Colossians 3, verses 1 and 2, Set your minds on what is above, not on the things that are of the earth. St. Cyprian, 258 AD, regarding this dialogue, he says, We ought to be watchful and earnest with our whole heart. St. Cyril of Jerusalem says, The priest exhorts us in this hour to lay aside 
all the cares of this life, all domestic worries, and direct our hearts to God in heaven, who hath so loved men. And so this is a time, again, this wake-up call. St. Cyril goes on to say that we, we should have that kind of attention toward God in every moment of our lives, but we're sinners, we're weak, but especially in this time in Mass, lift up your heart should be a, a signal for us, oh yeah, wake up, <laughs> I need to pay attention to what's going to happen. And also it's a attention to focus on God because when we focus on ourselves, we tend toward discouragement and despair. When we focus on God, uh, he leads us to hope. And then the, the third part of the dialogue, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Thanksgiving. You know, the Eucharist means Thanksgiving in Greek. So think about what's already happening at Mass during the Gloria. We say, we give you thanks for your great glory. Um, we're reflecting on what God has done in our lives and throughout history. Uh, after the readings, we say, thanks be to God, the first two readings. Thanksgiving is our proper response to God for his love and saving actions on the cross. In Psalm 136, verses 1 to 3, it says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. And so this sense of the priest in the person of Christ is inviting us to lift up our hearts and to give God thanks. There's so much to be grateful for. So St. Paul is as big on thanksgiving. He says in Colossians 2, 7, that we should be abounding in thanksgiving. Colossians 3, 17, giving thanks to God in all that we do. 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, giving thanks in all circumstances. And Colossians 3, 16, giving thanks especially in worship. So what do we have to give God thanks and praise? What should we be thankful for? Everything, our life, our breath, our family, our friends, uh, but especially for Jesus' dying on the cross, his Paschal mystery. When he died and rose to new life and ascended into heaven, he opened the gates of heaven so that you and I can follow him. Where the head goes, the body follows. And we, as the mystical body of Jesus on this earth, now have the opportunity to spend eternity with him in heaven. That, be, that should be something that we should be grateful for. And the crucifixion is going to be made present right before our eyes on this altar. And so our church, each of our churches will become like the Holy of Holies with the very presence of Jesus on this altar. Yes, we already have the presence of Jesus in every tabernacle on the earth, uh, but in a very special way, we are present at the Last Supper and at Calvary at Mass. Psalm 95, 2 says, Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. And, our, and the people's response is, it is right and just. It is right and just to give him thanks. And after this dialogue, we have the preface. And I, as I said, the priest has a lot of options for the preface. But this is kind of what's encapsulated in, uh, in the preface. The priest uh, talks to God in, in a prayer of thanksgiving in the preface prayer. A common beginning to the preface would be this. It is truly right and just, because the people have just said it is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty, we should do this, and our salvation, this is what we're celebrating, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father Most Holy. So the priest is inviting all of us. It is our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father Most Holy. So the priest is including the whole community in this prayer. And then you'll, you'll hear this pattern that follows Psalm 136, this um, God, we thank God for his marvelous actions in creation, what he's created. We thank God for his saving acts in the past, but we also will thank God for his saving actions today, like what this means for us today. God is always so faithful and will be faithful to us. And there's so many reasons to be thankful. So you might hear in the Christmas season, the preface talking about thanking God for the incarnation, for becoming one of us. Easter season, thanking God for his saving actions, his paschal mystery, his passion, death, and resurrection. At a wedding, you know, what God does where the two become one flesh. At a funeral where, you know, this life never ends. It, it, may, it may look bleak to the outside, but we know that life goes on for all eternity. All of this prayer revolves around the paschal mystery. And then at the end, you'll hear 
with all the angels and saints, with the thrones and dominions. And what, it, what it's saying is what we're about to sing in the holy, 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 uh, we're taking part in what's going on in heaven always. That we are singing with the angels and saints in heaven around the throne of God. So what do we sing? Or maybe at a weekday mass, we might say, Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. This is based on two different scriptures, Old Testament and New Testament. So Isaiah 6 verse 3 uh, comes right out of scripture. Isaiah has a vision of, of heaven. And around the majesty of God and his throne, he's surrounded by angels who are singing, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. All the earth is filled with his glory. And so Isaiah says that these angels are seraphim, which literally means burning ones. So in, in other words, they're so close to God, they're brilliant with, uh, they, they reflect his brilliance. And so when we sing at Mass the Holy, 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 or recite it, what the angels are constantly doing in heaven, we are participating. It's as if the heavens open up and we are singing with the angels and saints. And when you have a, a choir that really sings this well, um, you can kind of feel that you're, you're singing with the angels. This is the closest we will get to uh, being in heaven until we get there. And so Mass is not boring. And at this point in the Mass, I always think about my parents, my grandparents, those who've gone before me in faith, and imagine them with the angels and saints singing the praises of God. And in Hebrew, this threefold holy, 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 or in Latin, sanctus, 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 it's the high, strongest superlative there is that nothing compares to God. And then the second scriptural reference comes from Revelations 4.8. Um, St. John has a similar vision to Isaiah, where Jesus is seated uh, on the throne, um, and the six-winged angelic creatures, like the seraphim, are surrounding Jesus, and they're singing, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And then it says the 24 elders fall down and worship around the throne, praising Jesus, singing, Worthy are you, Lord our God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things because of your will they came to be and were created. So again, we're participating in this heavenly liturgy. Young people, I always talk to them about time traveling. You know, again, we're at the Last Supper, we're at the foot of the cross, and now we're actually in heaven with the angels and saints singing the praises of God. And it says the seraphim cover their eyes like they can't even um, fathom the glory of God. And so that's why at the end of singing the holy, 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 what do we do? Uh, here in the United States, we kneel. And this is a sign of, of adoration and reverence for the King of Kings. And then we sing, that's the first half of the holy, holy. Then we sing Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna is a transliteration of a Hebrew word meaning God saves. And it's become this expression of praise and adoration, especially in worship. So whenever we sing Hosanna, it's this song of, of praise, of the praise of God. And then we, see, we sing, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Again, scriptural. Look at Psalm 118, verse 26. And look at the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21, verse 9. Literally, it's right out of those two places. Matthew 21, uh, and this is your Lectio Divina for today, or for this week, is Matthew 21, verses 1 to 11. Jesus' triumph, triumphal, triumphant entry into Jerusalem on the donkey. People put their cloaks out and they're singing Hosanna and they're singing, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And so we as uh, followers at Mass, we're doing the same things. As we kneel, uh, we're, as we are about to kneel, we say, Blessed is he, blessed is Jesus who has come to save us. And this is his triumphal, triumphant entry uh, right here among us, right here on the altar. It's about to happen. We're going to get to the consecration uh, this next week. And so an encouragement for you this week is to watch The Veil Removed. It's a seven-minute video that shows the spiritual realities of Mass that I'm talking about here, uh, but we can't see. And again, once we understand what's happening underneath all of this, Mass will never be the same. So again, please follow the Lectio Divina. 
Matthew 21, verses 1 to 11. Uh, and just a few announcements before we close in prayer. Follow your commitment card. One or two things that you can do, keeping up with your prayer partner, accountability partner, encourage one another. Uh, and then a reminder, February 16th is our next large group gathering. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Lord's Prayer and Mass, and then also uh, maybe have a witness or two of what God's doing in our lives. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for the gift of the Mass. We thank you for inviting us into the heavenly liturgy to participate with the angels and saints, with Mary, our loved ones who have gone before us in faith and who are with you in heaven. Help us to appreciate the gift of uh, worshiping you, who are the King of kings and Lord of lords and deserving of all thanksgiving now and forever. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed week, everyone, and uh, please continue to like, subscribe, and share. God bless.